I don't know about you, but I feel like I've collected more investing accounts over the years than Michael Phelps has with gold medals. And with new platforms and apps coming out all of the time, I think it's probably easier than ever before to get your investments completely messed up. Now, I wanted to make a video like this for quite a while, as I think right now I've got everything organised in a way that, fingers crossed, I'm happy with for the moment and the first time for quite a long time. So let me just walk you through my own thoughts and explain where we are at the minute, because I also think that the recent rule changes of this new financial year might throw a spanner in the works for a lot of you. Right, firstly, just step back for a second, and before you can even work out how many accounts you might need, you have to work out what types of investment accounts are actually right for you. So as an example, you first have to decide things like, do you need a pension account known as a SIP? Or do you want to open a stocks and shares ISA? Maybe you need a cash ISA or even a lifetime ISA. Now, once you've worked out what you actually need, which is harder than it actually sounds, you then have to work out what providers and platforms you need to use in order to get access to those accounts. Now, there are very few platforms which offer every kind of account out there. And I'd argue that even if a platform does offer every account type, they might not be the best place for you. For example, some of the well-established platforms which offer more types of accounts may have more expensive fees and higher minimum investments. So if you're just starting out, you might not even have the money right now to go with them, or you'd have to save up for a month or two before you could even get the money to invest. Also, with the new ISA rules that have been in place since the start of the tax year, I think this makes things even more complicated now, as you don't have to just choose one platform for your cash ISA or your stocks and shares ISA for in a single tax year anymore, and you can just open as many as you want. Just on that note, I did a video here explaining all of the new rules and I'll make sure to link that in the description for you too or as an end card at the end of the video. Now, I'm a big fan of these changes and welcome the flexibility that it gives investors in the UK, but it can make things more complicated, especially if you're a newer investor who was only just getting to grips with the old rules and trying to get yourself organised. Anyway, so the first step is to make sure that you know exactly what kinds of accounts you need. And it's only at that point that you can then work out what your investments will start to look like. Secondly, you'll then have to work out what kinds of things you want to actually invest in as, surprise, surprise, not every platform will offer you every kind of investment. Some let you choose almost everything. Others might just be single stocks. Some can even be US stocks only, and others might just be ETFs. Then just to make things a little bit more complicated, some platforms will charge you different fees depending on what you invest in. Welcome to the complicated world of investing. Okay, so with that one out of the way, rather than just go through the theory about how many accounts you might want to have as an investor, I think it's best if I just go through exactly how I have mine set up and the reasons why I have things this way. I do think it's important to note that the answer to this question is a totally personal one. I can see where many people will be more than happy with one platform and one account, but I can also see it being a very personal decision about what you actually need to do and how some people might, for example, end up with about 10 accounts. This really truly is a personal decision and one that needs to be tailored to you. Now, just on that note, remember, I'm not a financial advisor, never claim to be, so please do figure out what works for you. But here's what I do and what I think works for me right now. Right, so I have, as of recording this video, about seven different investing accounts. I had to count them all on my phone and then I nearly forgot one that didn't have an app in the first place. First up though, four of these are just general investing accounts with very, very little money in. And this is because as someone who does this full time, I wanna make sure I'm keeping myself up to date with the latest app so I can give you kind of an honest opinion with how it comes to comparing them on the market. Now, if you exclude those, my investing portfolio is now just three separate platforms with different accounts inside of them. Let me show you what platforms I use and then I wanna explain in a bit more depth why I use each one and why I have things set up in this way. So I use Vanguard for my self-invested personal pension and I used to have an ISA here as well. I chose Vanguard as it's one of the most trusted names in the industry. The fees are relatively low and because it's my pension, I just wanted somewhere that's super safe for the very long term. If you follow along with my regular portfolio updates, you'll know that I transferred all of my old workplace pensions to Vanguard to manage myself. Nice and easy, super simple portfolio of just one fund, something that I can set and forget and just leave for a very, very long time. Next up, I use Trading212 for one of my ISA accounts. I use this platform because there are no fees for the stocks and shares ISA. There's no trading fees, you can buy fractional shares, and the only thing you have to worry about are the exchange fees if you do buy US shares, but they are only 0.15% anyway, which are some of the lowest in the industry. Now here's where I keep my individual stocks. I don't share what I invest here publicly. I never say never, maybe at some point in the future, I like to kind of keep them a bit close to my chest, but I'll probably just keep this one private for the time being. 
Another thing I use this platform for is interest on my spare cash though. I use the regular investing side of the app to just hold my emergency fund and I enjoy the daily interest that gets paid. Right now it's at 5.2% AER and there's no need to lock up your money or anything like that. Just before I do forget, I've made a useful spreadsheet guide comparing all of the best stocks and shares ISIS in the UK this year. If you follow the link in the description and pop in your email address, I'll send it across once you confirm your address. Also, again, just before I forget, there are offers on from some of these platforms up until the end of this month, which include 1% cash back on any money from Trading212 that you put into your ISA. And those links will also be in the description as well, as well as also in my spreadsheet too. Also, that's on top of the free shares or free cash that you can get for signing up through those links. But do check all the terms and conditions though, as usual. Okay, the final platform I use for two different accounts is Invest Engine, And here I have a stocks and shares ISA as well as a very small SIP that I wanted to try out as well. I chose to use Invest Engine because like Trading212, there's no cost for the stocks and shares ISA account, there's no trading fees, and you can also buy in fractional shares as well. I really like the simple approach here. You can only buy ETFs, but there's loads to choose from. And this helps me keep things simple and low cost. I should add here that no matter what you do or how many accounts you have as an investor, keeping things simple is probably one of the best things you can do in my opinion. I think this applies to most things in life as well. The more complicated you make something, the harder it becomes to manage and look after. Anyway, that's the platforms I use and the accounts I have. Now, let me explain why, as I think these might help you decide how many accounts that you might need. So for me, I think it boils down to three different reasons that I have my investments set out like this. The first, that I think it's important to have some level of diversification in the platforms that you actually use. In the same way as you have lots of different investments in your portfolio, I think you should also have different platforms to spread out your risk a bit as well. Now, as you may already know, with any FCA regulated platform, you should make sure that you are covered by the Financial Services Compensation Scheme. This scheme protects UK investors' cash and other financial products by up to £85,000 per person per provider. I should also add that some things are covered by an unlimited amount of money, like certain pensions, but you can always go on the FCA website and check here. Now, this doesn't mean that once you suddenly have more than £85,000 on a platform, you need to go to another one, and I've seen plenty of people get this very wrong even here on YouTube. Anything that you are invested in is not covered in the same way as cash is because the value of the investment is decided by the market at any time. The FSCS protections are not here to protect you if you invest in a bad company that goes bankrupt, that's your investment risk. But it's still useful to know anyway and just think on the practical side, if a provider were to go bust and you were relying on that platform to withdraw money every month from your investment, you might end up having to wait for weeks and months as things get sorted out, for example. So having another platform could be useful to make sure that you don't lose access, but that's just my own view and the level of risk that you might take might be a bit different. Secondly, and probably one that is a lot more personal is, I really like to have things well organized for my own investing psychology. Now, I've had to learn this part over many years, but I know that if I had all of my investments in one place that were very easy to mess with and tinker with, I would be way more likely to make stupid decisions. We're really lucky these days that have investment apps that allow you to invest really, really easily. But with that also comes the ability to make stupid decisions too. So by having my investments separated into their different pots, this helps me mentally deal with the ride that we all have to go through as investors. For example, having my pension with Vanguard in a mutual fund means that even if I found myself in a situation where I thought the world was going to fall apart, I know that even if I wanted to sell that investment, it would take at least a couple of days to go through. Also, I would know that it's inside a pension, so I can't really do much with it anyway. So knowing that stops me trying to do anything with it. I think that's important because even though I've been investing for many years, I think everyone has a breaking point where they can make stupid decisions in the short term. This is also why I like to keep my Trading212 for my stocks and shares, and then my Invest Engine for my ETFs. Both of these accounts are inside ISA, so that's the tax-free part sorted. But I know that if I had everything together, I'd potentially be more likely to mix things up and make things more complicated. I really like having my individual stocks separated, and then that way it tells me what I'm allowed to play with and what I want to just leave for the long term. Hopefully that will make sense and then this leads me on quite nicely to my final point. So as I mentioned the new ISA rules earlier, the fact that we can now open as many stocks and shares ISA accounts as we like is great. No doubt about it, I really like the new rules and they give us way more choice. But with that choice comes responsibility to get things right and not go too crazy. So the final reason I have things set up the way I do is to use the platforms for what I think they are the strongest in. For example, Vanguard is that big old trusted name, a safe pair of hands, and you know what you're getting. 
Trading 212 is amazing for virtually no cost, a free ISA and a brilliant to buy any kinds of shares and ETFs super quickly and also in fractions. Then Invest Engine I really like is a great place to buy ETFs, make my own portfolios, also another place to buy in fractions, and then you've even got a SIP option here as well. So once you combine all of those platforms, you've then got yourself the best of the best from each category, and you've kept things nice and tidy and neat. Now, for my head, that works really well, but for you, there might be no reason why you can't have just a single platform and manage everything there. This is something that's really personal to me, and I'd say that you have to just figure out what kind of investor you are and how you can best stay as a long-term investor. At the end of the day, it's really a battle of you versus yourself. And I think as investors, we're probably our own worst enemies really when it comes to building long-term wealth. We've got all of the tools now, it could not be easier, but we just have to make sure that we don't go too crazy with those tools and burn the house down. Anyway, I hope you get the point and that was useful. I'll leave you with two videos to watch next. Firstly, a video I did on the new ISA rules for this year. And then secondly, I'll put up the video I did looking at all of the best ISA platforms too, in case you wanna look at any of the providers that I've mentioned in the video. But I'll see you in the next video. As always, happy investing.